Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Meshwaraha Guru Deva Param Brahma Asmai Shri Gurave Namaha Chinmayam Vyapiat Saravam Trilokyam Sacharacharam at palam darshitam yena asmai shri gurave namaha pameva matha chapita pameva pameva bandhu sakha pameva Swameva Vedya Dravitam Swameva Swameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Swameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Om Sahana Vamatu, Sahana Vunaktu, Sahatiriam Karavai, He just been Abadita Mastuma with Vishabai. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So where are we in our text? And Ganesh, would you be so kind as to chant for us this evening? I have us uh, starting chapter five on page 113. Chapter five, page 113. Ganesh, are you there? Yeah. <clears throat> um. Um. Iti gaditam gana samam tat na para para sara vichara iti avila sa avila sa nira karanam kathamaksha samut. Charanam. The word Om is like the sky. It is not the discernment of the essence of high and low. How can there be enunciation of the point of the word Om, which annuls the manifestation of the unmanifest? So here he's making reference to the Mandukya Upanishad. Mandukya Upanishad starts with Om, the word, is all this, meaning the world of manifestation. Om is that which is beyond all this, meaning consciousness itself. Then we have the classic exegesis going into the meaning of the letters of the word Om. Om is divided into Chatushpada, four quarters. Not like the quarters, the legs of a cow. But four in an order of discussion. A uh, stands for the waking state. U stands for the dream state and all altered states. 
So if you go do mushrooms or LSD or ayahuasca, that's all in oop, ma, deep sleep. Fourth quarter, the silence. The Turiya, the fourth, which is not a fourth mind state. but it is the consciousness which illumines the movement of waking dream and deep sleep. And in those moments of samadhi, when the mind disappears, it still remains. The Avaduta Gita saying is, forget it all. It's all just words. Blah, 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 blah. How can you be concerned about the exegesis of the word all? The manifest world, that which is beyond it in the mind is not. There. Again, as we've been talking about, it's not stopping the mind indefinitely. It's penetrating into the understanding that you can't think a real thought. It's all that stuff. First couple mantras of all. It's just words. Let go of it all. Next verse. Itita Tamasi Prabhrati Shruti Bihi Pratipadi Tamat Pani Tatvamasi Tatvamopadi Vivarjita sarva samam kimu rodishi manasi sarva samam. The shrutis, the shrutis such as that thou art, proved to, prove to, prove to thee thou art indeed that, devoid of adjuncts and the same in all. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? So, this is the classic exegesis. Exegesis means when you pull apart the meaning of a scriptural passage. Of the famous Mahavakya Tatvamasi, that thou art, or in colloquial language, you are that. And then my problem is I, Jim, I have a hard enough time keeping my desk straight. I have a hard enough time getting my bills paid. Oh, I just screwed up one of my most important relationships. How can I be God? I'm a screw up. That's our experience. So the idea that somehow we're gonna turn the ego into Superman or Superwoman is not what it's saying. Listen very carefully. The upadis, the equipment, the body, mind, intellect, is finite. You can work on building character. It's a noble venture. It's like building big muscles, like building a 401k out of compassion for the rest of us, do it. But your upadis, your equipments, will never reach the end. 
And thank God you already are the ultimate. So the classic exegesis of Papua Masi is we have to use the inferred or the implied meaning of the words. This is called lakshana in Sanskrit. So I'll go through it quickly. Most of us have been through it before. You have a physical body, your meat lump. The infinite has, as it were, a physical body. It's not the form of Krishna or the form of Shiva, etc. It's the entire phenomenal universe, the Jagat. You have a subtle body, a world of thoughts and feelings. In an ego sense. The infinite has a cosmic subtle body. It's called the total mind. The term Godapati uses is Hiranya Garba, which literally means golden egg, but it means the sum total of all the thoughts and feelings that have ever been thoughted and felt, ever can be thoughted and felt, the potentiality, anything like that. You have a causal body, Karana Sharira meaning your particular bundle of asanas. And again, you can never see them directly. You can only infer them from their effects. The macrocosmic has a cosmic causal body. What is the cause of it all? Word we use is Ishwara, the Lord. Word literally means itch itch of thee, he who wills, he who intends. But at the core of your being, you are that chidakasha, that space of pure awareness. Which is birthless and changeless and deathless. Without any form. Never touched by the equipment. Ground of being of the entire creation. Brahman. Pragyana Brahman. Brahman is consciousness. That witnessing consciousness in you. That ground of being of the whole universe. They are the same thing. This is what we are. This is what you are. You're not a miserable creature. You're not a screw up. You're not a tiny little person shouting at the wind. Don't believe me. Just thin the mind a bit. Introvert your attention. Who are you? I'm of the form of this consciousness. Now, if I 
forget that and get identified with the upadis, then all of a sudden, the dream of this world becomes so very real. And I come and go up and down. I do this really good action. And then I screw up. And remember what the Sargadatta Maharaj says, worldly pleasure and worldly suffering are the same thing. You can't have one without the other. That's what it is. You choose. You choose. Gita in the Stipa Pragya Purusha section. Krishna says, for the person of steady wisdom, it's day to the world, people, places, things, and conditions, family, job, home, money, is night to them. Sleep to it. And what's day to the jnani, the person of knowledge? World doesn't even know that. Any thoughts? Next verse. Antha Antha Urtva Vibarjit Antha Urtva Vibarjita Sarvasamam Vahirantara Varjita Sarvasamam Yadi Chaika Vibarjita Sarvasamam Kimuro Dishi Manasi Sarvasamam. If thou art the identity in all, if thou art devoid of above and below, within and without, and of even the sense of unity, then why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Yes. So if this is who I am, if I am this heartless Brahman that is nowhere located and everywhere present. Self in me is the self in all. Why do I get all caught up? Believing I am the body. Other people are their bodies. My thoughts and feelings are real. Their thoughts and feelings are real. Now, one of the words we hear frequently in the scriptures is Leela. Leela means play. And the word in Sanskrit has the same dual meaning as the word play in English. So I can go to the theater and see a play, or I can go over across the street to the park and watch the kids play soccer. So it can be sport or a dramatic presentation. So the man of wisdom, the woman of wisdom, moves through the world 
as Leela. Oh, we sport with it. We may be seen to laugh and cry like any other person. But inside, soon you die. We are kind to people. We do our best to be an instrument of peace in the world. In Gita, the 18th chapter, Krishna is very clear. Do not give this teaching to people who aren't ready for it. And he agitates the minds. We meet people where they are. Inside. Surely. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Nahi kalpita kalpa vichara iti Nahi karana karya vichara iti Pada sandha vibhajita sarva samam there is no discrimination of rules and precepts. There is no cause or effect. That which is the identity in all is without words and the co-location of words. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? So there are no moral actions for you. Now, let me share with you something that I have seen over and over again. I'm going through a text with a, a friend called Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism. And it's by the great Tibetan Lama, Chogam Trungpa Rinpoche. And he talks about when we take the path itself, and we start to make a possession out of it. And one of the end results is we begin to form a spiritual ego. And then what happens is usually the Lord then shows us what a jerk we can be. If you're identified with being a spiritual person, you get to deal with the humiliation, if not just the humbleness, seeing what a hypocrite we are. So I tell you, give up trying to be a spiritual person. You're going to screw up. Frequently we do things that hurt people, which is different than doing things to hurt them. Sometimes oops. Stay out of it. Don't be any kind of a person. It's 
no rules. Now, that doesn't mean you don't want to behave in a way in the world. That's like the yamas and niyamas. You know, just out of compassion for other people. Try not to let our character defects hurt people. We're not always successful. What was the second idea, Ganesh? Uh, there is no discrimination of rules and precepts. There is no cause or effect. Yes. So understand that cause and effect. And by here, we're primarily meaning the whole teaching of karma is an illusion. If we're ego identified, then the law of karma, the teaching about it is useful. It gives us probably the only rational understanding of why bad things happen to people. Helps us deal with our change, changes in our behavior so that we don't set up karmas for the future. All of that becomes meaningless when you get out of the whole thing. Swamiji used to say, reincarnation is the genealogy of the ghost in the ghost. Yourself has no reincarnation. Yourself has no karma. Yourself is without cause. Yourself is without effect. And the world of name and form is Dreamlike. There's the illusion of cause and effect. But it isn't me. Again, if you dream that you're in the jail cell and down on Bryant Street in San Francisco, when you wake up, you don't go fishing in your dream memory. You know, what was the crime I did? I ended up in Bryant Street in the jail. Inside the dream, cause and effect, seem real. But to the waker, it makes no difference. You're not in jail. Never was really in jail. So, practically speaking, there can be value for those who are ego identified, even those of us who are mumukshus, who are seekers after liberation to do some causation hunting. We call this today psychotherapy. Uh, ACA work, inner child work. That's just the modern form of past life work. It's all the same. If it gives you some understanding, if it can give you some peace, well and good. But in the end, get out. None of it touches you. We leave the world of cause and effect. Whether we're thinking of it as 
past lives, so we're thinking of it as family of origin. None of it touches the self. You get to decide what world you want to live in. What's the next idea, Ganesh? Uh, that which is the identity in all is without words in the co-location of words. Yes. So it's beyond speech. So many of the scriptures, the Brahmins are arguing at some conclave, trying to defeat one another in argument. Then there's an ascetic, a mendicant, a bhikshu, a muni. Always remember who you are speaks much louder than anything you can say. Next verse. Nahi bodha vi bodha samadhiriti. Nahi desha vi desha samadhiriti. Nahi kala vi kala samadhiriti. Kimuro deshimana si sarva samam. There is no knowledge or ignorance and no practice of concentration. There is no space or absence of space and no practice of concentration. There is no time or absence of time and no practice of concentration. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Um, note. I don't think it's a note, but um, something. Practice of concentration is undertaken to overcome ignorance and attain the knowledge of the divine self. But if the self alone is then there cannot be either ignorance or knowledge or need to practice concentration. All right. So again, we have paradox here. This is a topic that is debated among the Advaita Vedantans in different schools. Is the practice of samadhi necessary? Very good question. Some would say no. We don't need to. In fact, this verse is said, samadhi is not necessary. Why, why get involved with samadhi? But there is a subtle point here. You may have what we call Paroksha jnana, indirect knowledge, meaning I intellectually understand. But, 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 if the mind is still under the influence of vasana, The mind will continue to extrovert into the world with real desire. And even though I may intellectually know I am the partless, formless self, I sure do feel like a person. Even though I may intellectually know the world of name and form is Nitya, but it still triggers me and attracts me. Shankara is very clear. 
If the mind still extroverts in the world, there should be no talk of liberation. Now, samadhi is not necessary, the mind state of samadhi. And frequently in the scriptures, we'll have great Mahatmas, and they will hear the teaching. They may go into samadhi for a murta, 48 minutes. And then go, why do I need to be in that mind state all the time? And they function in the world. But for those of us who may not be of that subtlest mind, merely called the samadhi can be efficacious. Now, this is a secret. You can't really practice nirvikopa samadhi. That's like practicing sleep. All you can do is practice being sleepy. I take a warm bath, drink my chamomile tea. Maybe take my melatonin, listen to some music, get into bed. And if I've been successful at being sleepy, the mind will slip into sleep. Likewise. We can really only practice Sadhikopa Samadhi. This is absolute equanimity of the mind. While there's still that subtle subject object. It's another way of describing, it's the technical term to describe what Swamiji used to say, and I use his language, tuning up, tuning up the mind. When people come into class, we work the Vedanta, I is all. This is Sabi Now, when the last attachment has been let go, the mind will end, and you will move into Nirvikopa. For some, it's a great bawai. For others of us, it's just a So the goal, don't make Nirvikalpa itself another object of desire. You drive yourself nuts with that. Instead, stay focused on who am I? And if you have moments of doubt, moments of identification, then do some tapas. But even near Vikampa is not the highest state. So those of us who've studied Tripura Rahasya, I think most of us have. In that beginning story of Hema Lake and Hema Chuda. So Hema Chuda, he's been instructed by his wife. He's all on fire. So he goes up into his crystal tower, gets everything set, and plunges into meditation. 
he sees a bright light, he comes out. Is this the same? We do it again. Plunges deep within, forcibly tries to stop the mind, and he thinks blank and dull and comes out. There's no consistency here. He does it a third time and he falls asleep. Sounds like you and me, doesn't it? But then he plunges within. And everything stops. There's this deep abiding peace. And this joy that you just can't put words to. comes out and says, this is the pearl of great price, the sumum bonum. This is what it's all about. Nuts to this world and going back inside. And wifey comes. Think of that girl. She comes up the stairs, grabs his robe. Comes out of Samad like a drunk. My dear, how is it that you who know the state art in it all the time, leave me alone? My dear, how can it be a perfect state when its gain or loss is accomplished by the opening or closing of the eye? The length of eight grains in the bar. That is not perfection. Perfection is to understand the fundamental unreality of this world. To see that all the forms are shunyata and then the mind naturally does not extrovert into it. And this is what that scripture calls sahaja samadhi, natural or continuous samadhi. That's the process. Now, yogis may be seen to be practicing near they call the samadhi. They have all these scriptures, Saint so-and-so was in his hermitage by the side of the river, and he was in near Vikalpa for 12 years and all that kind of stuff. Well, if he was a man or a woman of wisdom, why is he near the Kalpa Samadhi? Because he enjoyed it. But it does not add to his knowledge of the self. You either see it or you don't. So, for the man or woman of wisdom, meditation does not add to your knowledge. But you may enjoy Samadhi because it's the highest form of worldly pleasure. Here the scripture is saying, don't be attached to it. In the end, it's just a mind state. The fruit of nirvikalpa is knowledge of yourself. Stay focused on the goal. 
Am I hitting every cult? Don't worry about it. Do you know who you are? Can you at any time cast off the world? And rebel in your own self nature. And you'd be satisfied in the self by the self, as Jesus says. This is very subtle, but very important teaching. Anyone have questions about? All right, next verse. Nahi kumpa nabho, nahi kumpa iti, nahi jiva, nahi jiva vapo, nahi jiva iti, nahi karana karya vibhaga iti, kimuro de shimana si sarva samam. There is no part space or part, no individual body or individual. There is no distinction of cause and effect. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? So, if you have a clay pot, you've got pot space on the inside, you've got room space on the outside, who we'll use the glass? Glass space. Room space, magic trick. Am I moving space? No. If I were to break the glass, oh, the glass space is now going to merge into the room space. Or the jiva merges into Brahma. I go nowhere. The body, mind, intellect is like the clay pot. Untouched by the space, does not alter, define, confine space. Cannot really limit space. I have space on top of my head. Oh, I'm squishing space. No. And in Yoga Vasishta, my favorite term for the self, Chid Akasha, the space of pure awareness. Nothing is going to harm you. And nothing is going to harm anybody else. It's going to be okay. <coughs> Any thoughts on this? Whenever I hear verses about pots, I always think of a person who's carrying these great big, huge clay pots, quite heavy. Why are you carrying a clay pot? Shut up, I'm a pot. No, no, you're carrying a pot. No, I'm not, I, I'm a pot, I'm a pot. Don't let me drop the pot out, then I'll be destroyed. Shut up, I'm a pot. That's, 
I am my body, I am Jim, I am this, I am that, I'm a screw up, I'm good. Thinking on the clay. Next verse. Iha sarva nirantara moksha padam laghutirkha vichara vihina iti nahi varta nahi vartula kona vibhaga iti kimurodishimana si sarva samam. There is only. <laughs> Going on, I'm sorry. <clears throat> There's only the state of freedom, which is the all and undifferentiated, which is devoid of the distinction of short and long, of round and angular. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? Yes. So give up the idea that I, the jiva, I'm going to be a liberated person. That is a valuable ego state at one point. But what this text thunders, the ego never gets there. In the subtle intellect, in the Jnana Maya portion. Have you had this Pratya Vijnana, this recognition? I'm not a person. That's an awakened mind. And that Two occurs in my the real knowledge with the capital R. How do you know you were you? You do not see, hear, taste, touch, or smell yourself. You don't emote yourself. You don't think yourself. Even if you have the thought, oh, I am Brahman. That doesn't create the fact that you are you, and you know you are you. If the minds of ignorance, I just superimpose on that all bunches of nonsense. If it could be gained, it could be lost. We realize what we've always been. You get nothing. Next verse. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. shunya vishunya vihina iti. Iha shuddha vishuddha vihina iti. Hi sarva visarva vihina iti. Kimuro dishimana si sarva samam. Here is the one without void and absence of void, without purity and impurity, without the whole and the part. Why dost thou who art the identity in all grieve in thy heart? So here the point is 
In the beginning, we have to be mindful of this discrimination between the subject and all the objects, between the vast emptiness of being and the total voidness of form. But in the end, we give all that stuff up. person of steady wisdom has given up trying to be anything. You make a mistake, do your best to clean it up. And let it go. Stay in the now. Eternal. In the end, real spirituality is incredibly simple. What you're looking for, you're looking with. Don't worry, be happy, as Mayor Bobby used to say. Everybody's already realized. It's real. It aids this world that is not touched by this world. Hold it very, very tight. How many more in this uh, chapter, Ganesh? Quite a few. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can, we'll get through it. Okay, we'll go as far as we can. Next one. There's 24 more verses, I think. Okay. Nahi bhinna bi bhinna vichara iti Bahirantara sandhi vichara iti Ari mitra vi varjita sarva samam there is no distinction of the different and the non-different. There is no distinction of within, without, or the junction of the two. It is the same in all, devoid of friend and foe. Why dost thou word the identity in all, breathe in thy heart? So again, all these various distinctions that the philosophical texts and the commentaries go into. It is this, it is not this. It is like that, it is not like this. We give up this oscillation of the mind. But it all comes. It's all God. It's all okay. It's all good. It's all going to work out. 
Nothing needs fixing. I love the meter in these. Nahi shishya vishishya swarupa iti Nachara chara bheda vichara iti Niha sarva nirantara moksha padam Kimuro dishimana si sarva samam It is not of the nature of disciple or non-disciple nor is it the discernment of the difference between the living and the non-living. There is only the state of freedom, the all, the undifferentiated. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? So, disciple, non-disciple, have you received diksha from the guru as he whacked you on the head and given you a mantra? Do you have a spiritual name? Oh, I'm the Shisha of Swami so and so. He's not as great as your Swami. Maybe you drive the fun. It's funny at the end of Viveka Chudamani. Shankara says, oh, by the grace of some guru, I realize the truth. He can't even put his finger on what was the cause. So for the person of steady wisdom, we give up even the guru. Swamiji always used to say the guru is a temporary psychological device. A good guru puts himself out of a job. Now, this from my own experience. You always love the teacher. But you must reach a point where you have to hate the teacher. Next one. Nanu rupa vi rupa vi hina iti. Nanu bhinna vi bhinna vi bhi hina iti. Nanu sarga vi sarga vi hina iti. Kimuro di shimana si sarva samam. It is without form and formlessness. It is without difference and non difference. It is without manifestation and, and evolution. Why dost thou, who art the identity in all, grieve in thy heart? So those of us who may have been taught with the language of the Sankhyas, Purusha Prakriti, Nirguna Brahman, Saguna Brahman, We can't say that there's any difference, really. The tantricas say, Spanda, consciousness is vibrating. The enlightenment says, no, 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 Prati Binda, oh, it's like a reflection in the mirror. So 
stop the mind and you stop the world. How do I stop the mind? Quit believing the lie. And the appearance of thought, the awareness of forms, all right, one more. Naguna guna pashani bandha iti nuta jivana karma karomi katham iti shuddhani ranjana sarva samam. There is no bondage due to fetters of good and evil qualities. How shall I perform the actions related to death and life? There is only the pure stainless being, the same in all. Why dost thou hoard the identity in all grieve in thy heart? Yes. So remember both bondage and liberation occur to the mind. There is no other bondage than the deeply rooted conviction that I'm bound. There's no other liberation than the deeply rooted conviction based in direct experience that I am Brahman. And both are just mind states and never touch the self. You would like me I quit asking you the question. Do I know my essential nature? Shivana Nova, Shivana Yeah, but I want to have some cosmic experience. I'm sorry. Do I have a mind state? That's fine if you want. Do you know who you are? When you quiet in your mind and introvert your attention, look behind your eyes and notice the noticer. Do you see anybody there? All right, we'll quit here. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nat Pur Namudachite Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vishishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Yonamaha Hari Om All right, thank you all.